Thanks for tuning in to our podcast, Getting Down to Business. I'm Jill Brown, Academic and Career Advisor for the Muma College of Business. And I'm Ashley Curtis, Career Counselor and Internship Coordinator. Today, we have with us two members from USF Career Services, Lisa Schaus and Taylor Snipes, here to discuss top tips for a successful job fair experience. I'll let them introduce themselves. All right, thanks for having us. I'm Lisa Schaus. I am Director of Career Services at USF St. Petersburg campus. I have been here about nine years now, moved down from Ohio, actually found some warm weather, um, and then found a home here at USF St. Pete campus. It's um, amazing, I absolutely love being here. I love serving our students. Um, we help them with everything career related and career services, from I don't know what the heck I wanna do with my life. That never to, happens. <laughs> right? um, to how do I get the specific job and preparing for the job search process itself too. So. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, my name is Taylor Snipes. I am the Employer Relations Coordinator within Career Services. Um, and so I am originally from the Tampa campus. I got, got my bachelor's degree there in elementary ed um, and then got my master's there in the College um, Student Affairs program. And so I have been on the St. Pete campus for about two months, mm -hmm. so relatively new. Um, and then within my role, I work with employers, kind of talk with them, hear what they want out of their employees with students and try to get them connected with students as much as we can. Great, thanks. Really important role, matching students and employers, so. Thank you, and I'm already thinking elementary ed, a teacher lost, but us gain. Yes. So, okay, I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> I used to work for the college bed. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna ask you both, if you have a mantra or a self-care tip that you'd like to share that helps kind of motivate or set your day, week, yeah, I can share that um, I absolutely love my Amazon Alexa. Um, I have her in my bathroom so that way when I hop in the shower in the morning, I just tell her good morning and she lets me know what's the weather, what's the news, what's on my calendar. And then we end with a little devotional prayer time. And then she reminds me what time it is at the very end. So that way it gets me going and moving for the rest of the day. So it's a nice way to start. If you're running late, is she gentle about it? <laughs> okay. Nope, she just says the time is. <laughs> <laughs> the way you take the tone <laughs> depends yes, on that's up to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I'm pretty much a slowly get there kind of wake up type of person. So usually in the car, I'm a listen to podcasts, some type of entertainment, goes with reality TV podcasts, um, just to wake me up and on my commute to work every morning. Yeah, podcast, number one fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Um, all right, so for our next segment, we're gonna do a quick word association game. So Jill and I are gonna take turns. We're gonna give you a word. Mm -hmm. So first thing that comes to mind when you hear this word, professionalism. First thing I think of is just the way you look and the way you first present yourself, your first like impression. Right. I love that. Okay, great. Should we though research yeah. at you, Lisa? Research. research. So I think of employer research, preparing for mm -hmm. a meeting with an employer for an interview, for yeah. a job fair, understanding who they are, what's their mission, Great. et cetera. Love it. Uh, Taylor, leadership. Ooh, um, I think leadership really goes, the first thing I think of is like encouraging other people. That's like the first thing I think of. Nice, leadership. different from, yeah. And the last one, Lisa, networking. Networking. Confidence. I, I think that is something that um, a lot of people feel like they lack in a networking situation, um, but it's truly just a conversation. Um, so if you can have a conversation with somebody, you can network. Um, so you don't have to have a lot of confidence um, to jump into a networking situation. You just have to be ready to chat. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Just a chat. <laughs> and you all do a lot of these things to help, and we're going to get into this shortly, so I'm not going to give any spoilers, but you do some things to help students prep for some of that confidence as we talk about job fairs. So Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for playing. I know mm -hmm. we put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, all right. Good, though. Uh, so tell our listeners, why should students attend a job fair? Um, what's the importance and benefits, like different levels from first year to sophomore, mm -hmm. junior? Sure, a job fair is truly for every level of student and alumni um, because networking isn't just about getting a job, it's about making connections with other people. And sometimes those connections can be helpful. Maybe if you're a first year student, you're exploring options, you're not sure what you wanna do with your major. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to chat with people that might be in a field that you might be interested in, um, to ask them questions about, maybe they're recruiters, so a lot of them are in the HR realm. And recruiters never like 
like to chat. Oh, mm. not at all. <laughs> they will do anything to chat with you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so just walking up to somebody and saying, hey, I am a marketing major. You know, mm -hmm. what are some of the career paths for marketing majors in your company? Mm -hmm. Is a really simple starting question for a recruiter. If they're able to chat then about how people that have a major that's same as you, what they've done, where they've gone, what what's some skills that they have. And then you're able to form some conversations with them. Like if, if I'm interested in this and I want an internship in a year or two, what should I be doing over the next year? So you're able to get a lot of good insight from those recruiters for future opportunities. Okay. So that's a really great way for first year students. And you mentioned alumni. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so even alumni, they, they can attend career fairs, all of the events that we have just because Right when you graduate, that doesn't mean you have everything figured out. I mean, as I said, I started in elementary education. How many people switch their careers? Um, so we always have resources for alumni. And I think the biggest thing for me when attending a career fair is really just getting your face out there. So mm -hmm. we've been in a virtual setting because of COVID for so long. It's hard to remember who you're talking to, who you're meeting with because of email um, or anything like that, or just an applicant. So being able to see their face, yeah. hear about their dog or anything <laughs> like that, you can really have a something to remember the student by, the employer by, mm -hmm. it just makes that one-on-one -on -one connection. Love it. Um, so USF, we host career fairs every year. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you tell us typically when they're offered? Sure. So usually in the fall, we have at least a, a job fair around the September time frame. Um, sometimes we'll have a couple. One will be more focused on on-campus jobs and one will be focused more on off-campus part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. um, then USF Tampa often has several career fairs in the fall as well, usually in that September time frame too. Then in the spring, we're usually offering those internship and full-time job fair here in February at St. Okay. Pete campus. And we'll also see um, February is a busy time as well for um, uh, Tampa to have their job fairs as well. We're also doing some virtual job fairs. Mm -hmm. So there's an in-person, there's virtual options so students can actually check out which ones work best for them. Oh, Opportunities. The variety. Yep. Yeah. For all. Good deal. Okay. Um, so no, we want to jump into the meat of our mm -hmm. uh, podcast today, yes. which are tips. And because when you talk about the month, September and February, that's almost the start of school. Mm -hmm. And for those students that are new to USF, mm -hmm. then a job fair can be intimidating or if they've never been. So we want to uh, hear what your top three tips are for students to successfully navigate mm -hmm. this kind of sometimes scary event. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I think my first tip is see who's coming. Okay. Um, even if you haven't, you didn't hear about it until a day before the fair, um, you can still look up to see who's coming. Get an idea of what they're coming, what they're hiring for. Um, that'll help you plan out your experience. Um, figure out who are the top employers that you want to talk to. And then talking to additional employers too. Maybe um, start soft with one of those ones that are your, is not so important to you um, to kind of break the ice, get out the jitters before you move on um, and good. continue talking with um, that, you know, that mm -hmm. the dream job employer save till you're really ready and confident. And you're so that kind of help, mm -hmm. helps right. out. Um, so that's a, a, a good tip is, is really check out who's coming and, and make a plan for when you arrive. But plans can change. So be ready to be spontaneous and talk mm -hmm. to other people too. Okay. Talk to those employers that you haven't um, thought about because you never know what opportunities might sit with them that you've never really knew mm -hmm. even existed. I mean, I'm in a, a career that I never knew existed either. Um, so that's absolutely something just to don't get too rigid in your plan. Be able to spread out too when you get Flexible there. plan mm -hmm. because you do bring up a good point. Sometimes uh, you just don't realize that BayCare can be hiring for accounting and finance. Exactly. That's why they're actually at the fair, not mm -hmm. necessarily healthcare professionals. Exactly. So again, industry doesn't always predict what their type mm -hmm. uh, of hire may be or major. Absolutely. Right. And utilize Handshake. When you register for career fairs, that most of the employers are on there, okay. um, listed on there. And you can even go on there like Handshake profile and see what jobs they're currently hiring for. Um, so that way you can kind of prepare yourself ahead of time to see who is expected to be there. Um, yeah. That's kind of going off of that. And Did then, yeah. Are you going to give us our tip, tip yes. number two? My <laughs> next tip um, is more about being yourself. Um, so one thing for my, me when I was a student, even in career fairs, is I always made sure to be in something I was comfortable. So you want to be in like something that is professional, but I wasn't going to wear a blazer that I had never worn before <laughs> because then I'm going to be <laughs> finicking around with it the right. whole time. Um, so just know what you're wearing. Be prepared that day and really just be yourself. So um, 
and just be, yeah, be comfortable because it can be hard if you're nervous and things like that to talk to employers because you're, you're outside of your comfort zone. So wear something you're comfortable in where you're, you know, have maybe the same outfit you wear to every interview or every career fair that you know is going to work out um, your go to yeah, outfit. Yes. I always wear almost the same shirt for every interview because I'm like, this is the one I'm comfortable in. I know it looks good mm -hmm. um, and I feel I feel confident in it. Great advice. One of the things, uh, as long as you're talking about attire and what we can wear, and one of the services that I was hoping you yeah. could shed a little bit light on is the career closet um, for folks who maybe don't necessarily have access mm -hmm. um, to professional attire. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So we have a full career closet um, filled with clothes. We have professional dress, um, shirts, ties, pants, suit tops, um, blazers. blazers. Mm -hmm. um, we have everything except shoes uh, <laughs> because shoes are hard to clean every time. We can send things off to the dry cleaners easy. but um, So those are available anytime. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just walk in um, and get access to the career closet mm -hmm. location um, in the Student Life Center. Thank We're on you. the second floor. So come inside the career services office. We'll get you set up over in the career closet, allow you time to explore, mm -hmm. try things on. We have a mirror set up so you can check out how things are feeling, looking. Um, and then you just check that out through our main desk. Um, and it's a rental for free. Yeah. No need to pay for anything um, and keep it as long as you need it. Okay. Um, it's not like we need it back the next day. It's not a one day checkout or so a one week checkout. So if you want to a few fairs. Yes, right. if you've got, yeah. you know, we've yeah. got several fairs in a couple different weeks. So if you yeah. need it for that time, um, what I would also recommend is you're preparing for the fair, mm -hmm. come in early yeah. um, to get those items mm -hmm. because more people might be coming in the week of the fair to get those items. So come in early that week, not just the day before the job fair. Um, we do bring items to the fair. We will usually bring over a rack of some, at least just general blazers so folks can throw on a blazer mm -hmm. if they need to um, before walking into the career fair. So, um, but come early if you want to borrow something so that we have a full choice. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And I want to make a note because, I mean, Taylor, you and I have had several conversations with employers and I feel like the conversations I've had with employers who attend these career fairs when they're talking with students, it really makes a world of difference how you show up and how you present yourself, mm -hmm. starting with what you're wearing when you show up. You know, a blazer can make so much of a difference. So, you know, whether you have the financial means to go out and buy one or not, there's no reason for you not to have one if we have this incredible mm -hmm. resource on campus. So highly encourage it. Yeah, yeah. I love that it's free and mm -hmm. it allows students to kind of figure out maybe what will be their style, their right. professional style without having to spend a lot of money when, yeah, yeah. This, this day and age, so. Mm -hmm. Lisa, next tip. Next tip, tip our top Three, top three this tips. This is it. So come visit the career services office, right? <laughs> um, okay. One reason is print your resume okay. on some quality resume paper. If you're printing it on plain um, copy paper, that's all right. But if you want to stand out with the pile, um, and it's not done very often anymore. Mm -hmm. um, back in my day, so I'm an old lady now, <laughs> um, we used to print every resume and we'd have to mail them. Now we're emailing them. So nobody yeah. really thinks about printing mm -hmm. their resume on nice quality paper. Um, so if you're going to an event like that, to be able to print it, and we provide that paper for free, we have it available. Mm -hmm. Students can stop by and, and print it for free in our office. So um, print, we have lots of copies. We do bring a printer and set up the day of at the fair too. So you can print your resume there, um, but we recommend coming in early. So if you want to have somebody review it, look over it, give you some feedback, we can do that ahead of time um, and then allow you to print it off ahead of time so you're ready to walk right in when you get there. Yep. And I do recommend to students like print 10, at least yeah, 10. Yes. So mm -hmm. not to run out and they will yeah. because you just, every time you go in, it's always like, oh, okay, I didn't know. And I'm going to go see mm -hmm. this one, too. Absolutely. And that's how employers keep notes, too, if you notice. <laughs> I always They'll make them. a note They'll on the resume. They'll make a note on the back of the resume yeah. of something maybe a student said or something that popped out to them. And it's like, oh, you're going to follow up with so-and-so. So if you give that ahead of time, then that's just putting yourself one step ahead of maybe other students who don't. 
Yep. And another tip that I always like sharing with students, going back to your point about research, Lisa, mm -hmm. is I always look at positions. So if you know that mm -hmm. there's going to be a company at a networking event that has an open position, look and see what those job responsibilities are. See and tailor your resume to meet that specific position. Mm -hmm. um, I always think the more specific you can be with your resume, the better. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. Um, so one of the things we talk about, job fairs represent many opportunities, not just jobs or internships. Can you share with our students the value a fair can offer? So and, yeah, I think we, we talked a little bit about like, yeah. for instance, first year students um, coming and talking about like that career exploration, but sometimes even showing up um, showcases what type of a person you are and your character and sometimes that can get you opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have had before. Mm -hmm. For instance, I know of a student um, that I used to work with many years ago who was a first year, first semester student, decided I'm just going to pop by the job fair, put on his suit, took his resumes, started talking with the employers. It was a very big name company um, that did not hire first year students as interns but was very impressed by the fact that he came and chatted with them and was really prepared that the next semester when they had somebody drop out of their internship program, they said, wait, I know somebody who probably doesn't have something lined up because they weren't necessarily looking. And he got an internship with a big name company who doesn't hire first year students in his first year. Wow. Um, so story. sometimes mm -hmm. just showing up yeah. Yeah. Um, and being prepared can afford you opportunities you never knew existed mm -hmm. or literally did not exist. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, let's make this available to them. So. I always think about, too, um, mentoring opportunities. Yes. You may meet yeah. someone and it may not be the right time, just like you said, or you're mm -hmm. not at the right spot. Uh, you're not in the right place, but you meet someone and you really want to connect and maybe have mm -hmm. them connect you and et cetera. Absolutely. So mentoring. And I know too, we've got a lot of community um, groups that come out mm -hmm. and there are volunteer as well as paid positions within nonprofit organizations. And this oh. is just another avenue for students to explore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be so job and career focused. Mm -hmm. And these still lead to those types of opportunities later down the road. And a great networking tip um, at a job fair is if you're talking with somebody maybe at a company that isn't the person you want to talk to, but they're giving you some good information, a great question to kind of end on is, do you have one or two names of people that I should follow up and connect with? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, exactly. By doing that, then with each person that you then follow and connect with, you can build your network exponentially very, very quickly. Um, and especially within a field that sometimes you maybe had a hard time breaking into, if you just mm -hmm. ask somebody, hey, do you know somebody that's in that field that might be willing to just chat with me, do mm -hmm. an informational interview about their their job and their experience which can then lead to mentorships internships full-time mm -hmm. roles so. I feel like it's yeah, the yeah. start of this domino effect that can then help the yeah. student grow with their network this kind of uh, I feel like joins in with the conversation we have going but sometimes students hear the elevator pitch or that they need mm -hmm. one do you think this is a good time or what else could you recommend to start that conversation my biggest tip for an elevator pitch well, let's start off with what is an elevator pitch you need to have a 10 or 30 second just introduction of who you are what are some of your like key skills or credentials that you want to share with that employer um, and a little bit about why you're interested in that company mm -hmm. okay. but my big tip for an elevator pitch is to end it on a question. Mm -hmm. uh, end that quick intro with a question because that will then engage them in hopefully a conversation. Um, by asking them right. a question, it gives them, mm -hmm. opens up the door for them to start talking and hopefully they'll end then on a question and you're able to have a little bit of back and forth conversation. Mm -hmm. Gives you more time and more face with them than saying, here's who I am, here's my resume, thank you, moving on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a chance to really then engage with them. Ask a, a, a thoughtful question too. Um, going back to the research, re researching the company, what <laughs> mm -hmm. questions you have about that company. Maybe right. it's a question about their training process or program. Or I just like tell that. students, yeah. it's just, it's so easy to research a company now. Yeah. We didn't have all this <laughs> at our fingertips right. or on your phone, literally. And I mean, there's TED Talks, LinkedIn, whatever it might be. Look to see what the company is doing. And that goes mm -hmm. back to the planning piece. So you know yeah. who's there and then you can ask a thoughtful question. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, looking, thinking about career fairs, what else can a student do to stand out at a career fair? 
I mean, we've really touched on it, that research aspect, because yeah. that's going to be the biggest thing is it's your, like I said, the first impression that an employer is going to get with you. And so if you come in and you seem interested in that company or you seem interested in that position and you're eager, then I think that's going to be the biggest thing for an employer because they're going to see that maybe you aren't maybe you're a first year student you don't have the knowledge to hold that position but they see that you're willing to learn or you're willing you're excited about the opportunity um that's going to show your personality because a team is not you know an office an organization is not made up of the same exact personality um so they're going to want to see how your personality is portraying could be within that role or within that company so i think being yourself coming in with the knowledge and the research about each organization or even the potential of the position that they might have open is really the biggest thing to set you apart from others. And I would add um, exactly all of that. I had a, <laughs> a, a recruiter actually that summed that up in that she's looking for the ACE student. Um, and she meant ACE as an A for ambitious, C for competent, and E for enthusiastic. Um, and she was talking competence in a general way um, because they were open to all majors. Um, they didn't care exactly what your major, they were like, we can train you, um, but we need somebody who's ambitious and a go-getter. So they didn't want to pull people from the aisle and say, hey, come talk to us. Right. They wanted people to step up to them. Just doing that was like check mark. They're ambitious enough to walk up and chat with me. Competent, so sharing a little bit about their communication skills. As they're talking to them, they can see, okay, they know how to have a conversation. And then enthusiastic. Are they smiling? Um, are they happy to talk with me? Are they excited about the company or opportunities? So it wasn't anything major that they right. were looking for. Mm -hmm. It was really simple things um, that they were looking for in those um, candidates to be able to then bring them in for the, the follow-up interview. You know, I love a checklist. I love an acronym. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be our title for this, I'm pretty ace. sure. Yep, ace yeah. your job fair well, right there. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, and I'm glad you brought it up, the enthusiastic mm -hmm. piece, because a positive attitude and enthusiasm mm -hmm. can <laughs> cover up maybe either that you may not have some skills or this or that. It, it just goes so far mm -hmm. to advance your standing with a company and just they know to me we've had this debate skills somebody has a perfect match but somebody else has this attitude and you know you right. can train mm -hmm. so you know it's it makes decisions tough sometimes but also can set you apart so yeah we appreciate. hear that from employers over and over again is that like you can teach the skills and the right. nitty-gritty um things but you can't but you, teach someone's attitude that's or the right. way they feel about you know their job or the company or even just being there and as you said mm -hmm. earlier things never go as planned mm -hmm. so being right. flexible with that mm -hmm. positive attitude helps being able to maneuver and flex mm -hmm. as needed um, I guess I was thinking we kind of talked a little bit, but you do, there's typically a little bit of a prep station, right? Before Absolutely. the job fair. And sometimes I've seen, we, we usually help out yeah. uh, when students are nervous or maybe they want to practice their pitch yes. or print some resumes last minute, right? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So, so we have a, a location, we usually call it the preparation station okay. um, that students can utilize the computer. Um, so again, if you didn't prepare ahead of time, we have resources to help you prepare, right? To go look up that employer. So don't you avoid it table. So, just yeah. because you aren't prepared. Exactly. Don't <laughs> avoid it. Still come because um, they want employers want to see you um, at the fair itself. They want to talk with students. They want to talk with everybody. Um, and then they'll make a decision on whether they want to continue to talk with you a little bit more. Right. Um, so that's um, why you just need to show up. Just be there because mm -hmm. um, you never know what could happen just by coming. I did have, as you were talking about this, I had a question. Do you recommend students specific years? When, what year should they start going to the career fair? So every year, yes. um, this is if you're asking me. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be, because first year you can do that exploration. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you start asking a little more than the following years about, um, you know, what are the internship opportunities and look for your internship. And then you start asking about the full-time job experience as you're moving along. Um, but also it's that touch point. Yeah. It's that recruiter seeing you over and over again mm -hmm. saying, they're really interested in us. When are you ready for an internship? Because we're ready for you. We're excited that you're excited about us. So that the building those touch points and allowing recruiters to remember who you are and what your, your name is. So when that resume comes through to that, that dream job that you want, you're almost in. I can't say you're in, but yeah. you're, you know, yeah. you're, you're in for the interview probably if you've made those connections. Yeah. 
Taylor, I was going to say, I know you talked about Handshake earlier. So do students need to register for the career so fair? And then if so, can you talk to us a little bit about what that process looks like? Yeah, so um, as a student, you can register. You don't have to. Um, you can register when you get there and you can check in. Um, but registering is a great way to know what employers are there. Um, we try to upload a map ahead of time so you can go ahead and map out. Mm -hmm. Like we said, be flexible. It's not always going to follow suit. Um, but we can have a map so you can kind of know ahead of time what the layout of the room might be, what areas you want to hit, what order you want to hit, um, and you can go ahead and prep to see what employers will be there. Um, so if you sign in as a student on your Handshake account, and it should be under fares um, mm -hmm. for the students, and then you can see our fare there, and you can also um, access other events on there as well, but that's going to be the easiest way to register and view what employers are going to be there. Wonderful. Thank All you. Right. We really appreciate you sharing your top tips. I'm going to summarize for our listeners and make sure I credit, but I know Lisa <laughs> mentioned planning and visiting with career services to have resume, professional resumes printed. Yeah. And then Taylor's top tip was being yourself, being comfortable and mm -hmm. uh, authentic in that yeah. sense, right? Okay, so two final questions we ask all our guests. If you could go back in time and give your college self career mm -hmm. advice, what would it be and why? So I'll start with you, Taylor. That's tricky. Ooh, okay. Undergrad self, I I probably would have said to look outside of teaching. Um, <laughs> in, in like I came in, that was my major. I was ready. I did my internships. And I did two years worth of internships, but I never really knew what else I could do with my education major except for teaching. Mm -hmm. um, so I wish I would have probably talked more with teachers who had left the field, figure out what I could do with my, or even career counselor to figure out, okay, what can I do with my degree other than teaching? Because I really liked education, um, but the classroom wasn't quite the fit for me. So yeah. that would have been, yeah, explore. But you found your fit here. I did, yes, Yay. exactly. For USF. Yeah, so explore more. Um, I think I would give myself the advice to stop worrying so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> We've heard go, this. go with the flow. Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be all right. Um, and to help myself boost my confidence at that point in time. I, I lacked that, and I didn't think I was enough. And I was able to really find out that I am enough through a lot of my experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't want to give too much advice to change those experiences, um, but just to tell myself to settle down, it'll be all right. Isn't it crazy how fearless we are as we, in our youth, right? Mm -hmm. And we're gonna jump off the roof. Why not, right. it's there. <laughs> but then as we start to uh, near graduation, life becomes a little more real. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so I appreciate that. Don't worry, be happy. Yeah. <laughs> what is the best way for our listeners to connect with the both of you? So if you'd like to reach out um, to Career Services, stop by, see us, of course, in the Student Life Center on the second floor. Um, you can reach out um, via email, of course. So USFSB Career Center at USF.edu. Um, me specifically, L Schaus at USF.edu. Um, happy to connect with anybody or so, and virtually so, students so. can also do appointments that way Absolutely. too. I know that they yeah. kind of like not always that's having part to of our life right drive now, in, right? right? Yeah, right. yeah. So we'll do in person if that's what you prefer, or we right. will do a a Teams meeting or a phone call, or um, whatever Perfect. works best. So great. Yeah. yeah, same for me. Email works. My email is tsnipes um, at usf.edu, um, and you can always make an appointment on Handshake as well for anyone yeah. in our office. Perfect. And following us on social media. Yes. Of yes. Our yes. Instagram. So That's right. Yeah. And we're all on Instagram. Thanks for tuning yes. into the podcast today. Spotify, Apple, YouTube. And as Taylor just said, don't forget to check out Handshake, internships, jobs, events, and career fairs. Thank you both. See you soon. <laughs>